So with MMIs, in my opinion, there's just certain topics that come up every single year. Like, without a doubt, even even if if you get four interviews, gonna be some topics that just will come up. Like I'm convinced of it. But I thought I'd make a video just making a super quick run through of all the different topics that I think just will come up this year and every year because they come up all the time. Right, so first topic, staff shortages. They come up all the time. I'll be honest, I didn't get one in my interview, but I know that they come up all the time. They might ask you about like, how the NHS currently deal with staff shortages, how the NHS should deal with them. They might ask about like, how doctors deal with it, like mental health. They might ask about like resilience, like how what resilience do you have? Okay, another topic that always comes up, medical ethics. I feel like you're either that person where this is just obvious and you know it through and through, you know the four pillars, or you're someone who's like, what is that? You need to, if you're in that, what is that camp? You need to move over and you just need to like, you need to read the medic portal. I'll put it on screen, I'll link it down below. There's gonna be an article which will explain it in simple terms. It's literally just the bread and butter of an MMI interview. Like, well, there's a couple of cases that um, I think it would be great for you to know about. Bawa Gaba was actually a doctor from a few years ago who was found guilty of negligence manslaughter. So basically she was looking after a little boy and she gave him the wrong diagnosis. So she ended up treating him in the wrong way and he ended up passing away sadly. She was working under extreme pressure, covering several wards without adequate supervision and with IT problems. But moving on to some other topics that come up all the time in your MMIs. Smoking apparently is one. So in Scotland, um, they banned smoking in cars in 2016 and apparently since then there's been a massive reduction in children who have had severe asthma attacks that have led to them going into hospital so an example of a question that they could ask you about smoking could be something like should the nhs fund treatment to people who are smokers or heavy drinkers um, who suffer from an illness that has been caused by their habits and this has quite a lot to do with the four pillars of medical ethics so obviously justice it's not very fair to not treat people even if they have a disease that's caused by their own habits and doing by the way guys i was recently on a podcast talking all about my application journey my experience with interviews at newcastle and sunderland and my experiences on placement so if you want to find out a bit more about that and have a listen then i'll leave a link down below um i knew i wanted to do medicine from like gcse time I've, I've always kind of wanted to do to do medicine i don't really know why because i don't have any like doctors in my family or anything like that but yeah i went into my a levels wanting to do medicine so i knew all about like the uk the B. So it's in their best interest to treat the patient anyway. You could also talk about the NHS core values. So that's um, pretty much treating everyone at the point of care. So regardless of whether or not, you know, you know, they've got a really bad lung infection because of their smoking or they've got like a really serious liver problem because of their alcohol drinking habits, like you treat absolutely everyone to the best of your ability at the point of care because that's just the NHS core value. And also you could mention the fact that sometimes the reason why people smoke and drink excessively is usually for factors that are outside of their control. So things like family, peer pressure, socioeconomic factors and mental health problems. So it's not always a matter of like someone's decided to smoke. Sometimes it's just like their circumstances, their background, their family, the environment they're in. Another thing that without a doubt comes up every single year is structure of the NHS. So I think it's crucial to understand that you know we have in the UK primary care hospitals and community like you need to go into your MMIs knowing this just I mean you won't get asked a simple question like what is a GP but they'll definitely kind of ask you about what do you think of this part of the NHS do you think that this part needs funding where do you think funding should go to and um, they'll ask you about like doctors the role of doctors you need to know that really really well the role of nurses they could ask you something like would you rather be a nurse or a doctor? As well as looking into the NHS core values, I'd also recommend looking into the GMC. I'm sure you guys would have heard of it before, but um, I feel like this might come up as well. So there's a page on Blackstone Shooters, which talks about the key information that you need to know about the GMC. Some of the practice questions that I saw online were quite difficult, but I think sometimes practicing difficult questions is quite helpful because it prepares you for the actual interview. It was basically a role play and it was, you know, you're a first year medical student who's speaking to a patient and the patient asks about the GMC in lay terms what the GMC is and I think that's quite a hard question. If you don't know the GMC is the General Medical Council and they pretty much determine what medical students will be learning and you know they decide how much you need to know and what you need to know to graduate. They also do a bunch of stuff for doctors as well. I'll insert a little clip of a video explaining what the GMC is in simple terms. We trust doctors with our health and our lives so we all need to be confident that they are competent and work to high standards. 
To keep patients safe, at the General Medical Council, we decide who is qualified to work as a doctor, and we set the standards for medical education and training in the UK. Another thing that comes up every single year without fail is role play. So hopefully you guys have had a little bit of practice with role play. I know I've included a few in my MMI videos, but definitely I think MM in role plays, in my opinion, is all about empathy. Like I think when I've seen a couple of mark schemes and it seems to be you really want to just understand the patient let the patient speak don't interrupt them see things from their point of view reassure them that you've heard what they've said you understand them and then also a big thing with role play as well is to not lie like if you don't know the answer to something say that you don't know but you'll ask a senior and another big thing with role plays is you always you always want to do the right thing so if you've read tomorrow's doctors or good medical practice i think it's called that other document that you need to read for your sjt and um, pretty much that will just tell you all the different things that you need to do and stuff i probably won't make it now but i think people always say read tomorrow's doctors read good medical practice making that like a video would might be quite cool so that there's like a video version of it i don't know let me know in the comments if you think that that would be a good video video idea um but thank you so much for watching good luck for your interviews wishing you the very very best bye